All right, so in this video, I'm gonna be proving to you guys that pi is equal to three. So as you guys probably already know, pi is an irrational number, meaning it doesn't have a whole number value and it's actually equal to 3.14159 and on and on and so forth forever. So that's why it's an irrational number. It's to just don't stop going. So in this video, I'm going to be proving to you guys that pi is actually equal to three and not the irrational number that we all know it is. So what I'm first going to do is start with the statement x is equal to pi plus three over two. So all I'm doing is I'm giving a value to a variable which is completely illegal, which is completely legal. So now what I'm going to do is multiply both sides by two. So I get two times X is equal to pi plus three over two times two. Now two times X is equal to two X. So I get two X is equal to these two twos cancel out pi plus three. So I get 2x is equal to pi plus 3. And now from here, I'm going to multiply both sides by pi minus 3. So I have pi minus 3 times 2x is equal to pi plus 3 times pi minus 3. Now, pi plus 3 times pi minus 3. I'm going to distribute the pi so I get pi squared plus 3 pi minus 3 pi, which they just simply cancel out, plus 3 pi minus 3 pi, these two cancel out, and then I have minus 9 at the end. So this is, I can just say this is pi squared minus 9, and for my left hand side, I can distribute the 2x so I get 2x pi minus 6x. And now from here, I'm going to add x squared on both sides. So I have x squared plus 2x pi minus 6x is equal to pi squared minus 9 plus x squared. And let me just reorder this real quick. I'm going to write this as x squared minus 6x plus 9, so I'm going to add 9 on both sides, is equal to x squared minus 2 pi x, so I'm going to subtract 2 pi x on both sides. And at the end, plus pi squared. So I have x squared minus 6x plus 9 is equal to x squared minus 2 pi x plus pi squared. And now x squared minus 6x plus 9, this factor is out into x minus 3 squared. And x squared minus 2 pi x plus pi squared is the same thing as x minus pi squared. So I have x minus 3 squared is equal to x minus pi squared. And now I want to cancel these two squares, so I'm going to take the square root on both sides. So now the square root of x minus 3 squared is equal to x minus 3, and the square root of x minus pi squared is equal to x minus pi. So I get x minus 3 is equal to x minus pi. So now I'm going to cancel these two x's out by subtracting x on both sides. So now I get negative 3 is equal to negative pi. And now if I multiply both sides by negative 1, I get pi is equal to 3. So there you have it. I just proved that pi is equal to 3. So now where did I go wrong? Because obviously we know that pi is not equal to 3. So where did I go wrong? Well, I actually went wrong on this step right here where I said that the square root of x minus 3 squared and the square root of x minus pi squared is equal to x minus 3 and x minus pi, respectively. Well, this is actually not true, 
the square root of x minus 3 squared isn't equal to x minus 3, is equal to the absolute value of x minus 3. And same goes with the square root of x minus pi squared. It's not equal to x minus pi. It's equal to the absolute value of x minus pi. So the reason this is so important is because now I get x minus 3 is equal to negative x minus pi or also negative x minus 3 is equal to positive x minus pi since we're taking the absolute value of these two. So if we want to solve x minus 3 is equal to negative x minus pi, we're going to have to first distribute the negative sign. So I get x minus 3 is equal to negative x plus pi. So now if I add x on both sides, it's to cancel out. So I get 2x is equal to 3 plus pi. And x is equal to 3 plus pi over 2, which going back is what we started with. So there you have it. That is something really important to know that the absolute value is, or sorry, the square root of a square isn't just the normal version, it's the absolute value of that. All right, so in this equation, I wanna be solving three to the power of x is equal to x to the power of nine. So to solve this, what I'm first gonna do is take the power of one over nine x on both sides. So I get three to the power of x to the power of one over nine x is equal to x to the power of nine to the power of one over nine x. And if I have something in the form a to the power of m to the power of n, this is equal to a to the power of m times n. So three to the power of x to the power of one over nine x is gonna equal three to the power of x times one over nine x. And this is gonna equal x to the power of nine times one over nine x. Now x and nine, x and x in the denominator here cancel out. So I get three to the power of one over nine is equal to x to the power of nine and nine cancel out, one over x. Now, one over nine is the same thing as 3 over 27. So now I can rewrite this as 3 to the power of 3 to the power of 1 over 27 is equal to x to the power of 1 over x. And 3 to the power of 3, well, that's equal to 27. So I get 27 to the power of 1 over 27 is equal to x to the power of 1 over x. And notice how these two are in the same form, a number to the power of one over that same number, meaning x is equal to 27. So now to check, I can plug this in to my equation, three to the power of x is equal to x to the power of nine, x is equal to 27, so I get three to the power of 27 is equal to 27 to the power of nine, and 27 is the same thing as three to the power of three. So I get three to the power of 27 is equal to three to the power of three to the power of nine, which is equal to three to the power of 27 is equal to three to the power of three times nine, and three times nine is 27. So I get three to the power of 27 is equal to three to the power of 27. And this is right. So my solution over here is right as well.